2020, a year we will never forget. The never-ending pandemic, racial tensions, shutdowns, virtual schools, a very divisive presidential election. Oh, and murder hornets. Who can forget murder hornets? Despite the chaos, there is a lot to be thankful for in 2020. I officially launched my Encore career as a writer, speaker, advisor, and coach. I published my second book, along with a journal and a workbook. Through my work, I was able to meet some incredible leaders, virtually of course. Carmen and I celebrated our 19th year of marriage and welcomed another grandson into the world. Another redhead, go figure. Jasper Bryant Tun is quite the little dude. We also welcomed another great niece and great nephew to the family this year. Before this starts to sound like an annual Christmas letter, I want to encourage you to pause, reflect on 2020, and all you have to be thankful for. But before you do, I want to share a story with you, a story of thankfulness in another chaotic time, a story I've been sharing through my blog every year at this time, a story of how Arlo Guthrie saved my life. It started on Thanksgiving, a long, long time ago, in a beat-up station wagon somewhere on Interstate 65 and State Road 46 between Indianapolis and Nashville. Nashville, Indiana, that is. My first wife, our two kids, and I were heading to her mom's place for Thanksgiving. The drive was going, well, it was going like you would expect it to go, with two boys under the age of 10 strapped in a car in the days before iPods, Game Boys, iPads, and cars with DVD players. Even though it wasn't a long drive, they were still bouncing off the roof. My wife was reading, and me? I was jamming out to my favorite radio station, Q95. Well, as jamming out as you can be with a wife and two kids in the car. It was about noon. Okay, to be specific, it was straight up noon when this song came on the radio. This song about Alice and a restaurant. A song called Alice's Restaurant. Sorry, Arlo, I, I had to do it. Here was this guy playing guitar, telling a story, and singing. Granted, there was more storytelling than singing, but it was captivating, not only for me, but for the two banshees in the back seat. They quieted down and listened. For 18 minutes and 34 seconds, they listened. It was amazing. By the time Arlo finished the last chorus, with the boys and I singing along, we were pulling into Nana's drive. A year later, we were on the road again, in the same beat-up station wagon, with the same two rambunctious kids in the back listening to the same Q95 radio station. Lo and behold, they played the same song at the exact same time. Amazing. What is the coincidence? What are the odds of that happening? Okay, it wasn't for another year or two that I realized it was a Q95 Thanksgiving Day tradition to play Alice's Restaurant at noon on Thanksgiving. I was a real slow learner back then. Fast forward several more years, my wife and I were divorced. Hey, as my youngest son Brad once said, this ain't leave it to beaver around here, you know? I was spending Thanksgiving with my girlfriend, and both of my sons were spending Thanksgiving with their mom. Although we had been divorced for some time, I still wasn't used to not seeing them on a holiday like that. I was kind of moping around, helping Carmen get dinner ready, when the phone rang. It was my oldest son, Jeremy. Dad, are you listening? He asked. Huh? Listening to what? I responded. I guess I was still somewhat of a slow learner. Alice, are you listening to Alice? Expletive deleted on my part. I immediately ran to the stereo, turned on Q95, and listened in. I think I even began to sing along. 
I am sure Carmen thought I was going a tad nuts. After the song was over, I started to explain the story to her, how it had become a Thanksgiving tradition to listen, how the boys and I would sing along, all of it. She just looked at me, smiled, and walked over to her CD cabinet, reached in and pulled out the CD, Alice's Restaurant by Arlo Guthrie. If I already wasn't smitten with her, I was now head over heels. Fast forward about a decade or two. The tradition continues. Every year at Thanksgiving, no matter who is joining us, Jeremy and Brad, their families, our folks, and the occasional friend, we play Alice's Restaurant and sing along. We even printed off the lyrics so our folks could be sure to follow and read the words. Dave and his wonderful baritone provide cover for all the rest of us who can't really sing. Okay, so Arlo may not have actually saved my life, but he without a doubt saved my Thanksgiving and helped us build a sense of family and tradition during a time of turmoil and transition. You can bet that at noon on Thanksgiving, we will be gathered in the family room, masked up, socially distanced, with Arlo's guitar pumping through our Sonos stereo, singing at the top of our lungs. Won't you join us? As Arlo says, sing it the next time it comes around on the guitar. You can get anything you want at Alice's Restaurant. Have a great Thanksgiving.